As No Shave November approaches, we are once again reminded of a trait that makes us unique from other great apes, the ability to grow facial hair. Upon observing the qualities of facial hair, such as it needing energy to grow, um, the fact that it can increase rates of infection, and the fact that it's extremely unaerodynamic, one could ask, why is it that we still have this undesirable trait? Other theories that have been suggested say that beards augment females' perceptions of men's age, social status, and aggressiveness, but not attractiveness. This must indicate the existence of a vital function it must have played for it to have become a universal trait. Our theory, uh, taking that into account, tries to analyze the physical characteristics of beards and how they would have directly aided early man to survive. This led us to the hypothesis that beards were utilized as a mobile cache to store and transport food. <laughs> this is an artist's depiction of how a early man's beard would have looked like. <laughs> the following is a comparison of normal straighter hair and curlier beard hair that you would find. Straighter hair has a low surface area to volume ratio thanks to its circular cross-section and, and thus has very low adhesion. Curly beard hair, however, has a very high surface area to volume ratio as seen by its uh, oblong-shaped cross-section, and it maximizes adhesive ca capabilities, almost like Velcro. <laughs> this would thus allow for food to be adhered to the beard. <laughs> the strategic placement of the beard is also imperative to its function. The close proximity that the beard has to the mouth makes easy accessibility of food that would be stuck in the beard. And also, maximized field of vision makes verification of presence of food in the beard extremely quick. Next, when we analyzed the movement of the head and beard during running motion, we found out that the resulting shape is virtually identical to a sine function graph with a very low amplitude the resulting vertical stability would have ensured for food not to be lost during rigorous activities such as, <laughs> such as skipping, dancing, or running. Now, all, all these physical traits would have worked together to, to enable man to use both hands freely and store larger and larger pieces of food, even entire limbs of animals. <laughs> this would have gathered, garnered success for strenuous activities such as combat, such as combat or hunting. <laughs> now, one may suggest, well, wouldn't this presence of food attract predators? Well, nature, Mother Nature, in, her, in all her wisdom, created a biological failsafe to present, prevent a, f a faster predator from catching humans due to the presence of food. And this section's about the evasive maneuvers. Human beings, as a biological face, failsafe can perform what is called trichoautotomy, or casting off of the beard. <laughs> As anyone with a beard would know, this process does require sufficient motivation and strength. <laughs> and it is quite painful, as anyone would know. However, uh, as an example of convergent evolution with the green animal, which can cast off its tail to distract predators, male humans, upon casting off their beards, can also regenerate their beards <laughs> within a matter of weeks. <laughs> Despite the abundance of such uh, convincing evidence, we decided to test out the tr true degree to which beards could enhance performance in daily activities. Male students from an age group of 17 to 18 were divided into two smaller groups, group A with beards and group B without beards. Having fasted for six hours prior to the task, they were instructed to run 1,600 meters as fast as possible. And to simulate the uh, presence of food in their beard, they, the bearded students had a high energy content paste applied to their beards. <laughs> and for anyone who is sensitive to uh, graphic things that are of graphic nature you should turn around right now. The following clip is a demonstration of the application process of the high energy content paste. <laughs> the
The paste in our case was a hazelnut spread, more commonly known as Nutella. And as we, as we conducted this experiment, the results were astonishing. The students that had nothing to eat in their beards, the students that had no beards, failed the task miserably with a negligible number of students passing out towards the end of the run. <laughs> but bearded students, despite receiving no instructions whatsoever on what to do with this hazelnut spread, <laughs> these bearded students instinctively utilized advanced tongue manipulation techniques <laughs> To, to consume this and derive a high energy boost, completing the task swiftly and majestically. <laughs> thus proving, thus infallibly proving the immense evolutionary benefit of the beard as a mobile food cache. <laughs> now, as human beings became less nomadic and the need for modern, uh, organic food preservation methods decreased, we can see that in modern society, beards are not as popular as they once more, which is sort of disappointing for some people. But as there are more and more signs hinting the fall of civilization, such as epidemics, climate change, or economic crises that specifically threaten modern food preservation methods, there have been an increasing number of people that have been growing out their beards called hipsters by some. <laughs> so as you return to your daily lives and you happen to come across one of these individuals and you're filled with feelings of disgust or revulsion, try to appreciate their beards instead. That's harking in a new era of beard power. Because eventually it might grow on you.